Uh, you've, you've talked extensively about how this man influenced you as a boxer. Why don't you talk to them about it? Well, uh, it's no big secret that uh, I emulate Muhammad and Sugar Ray Robinson because uh, they brought, they transcended the sport of boxing, they brought entertainment to a, a sport that was highly criticized because of the nature of the sport. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to take this time to thank Ali because he made it possible for me and Mike mm -hmm. to be in this position. Mm -hmm. I don't want your hand, I don't want your wallet. <laughs> you want money from you and Stallone. <laughs> if you had to name him, say for instance he were an opponent. Oh, come on, come on, man. What would, come on. What would his name be? Uh, the Rabbit. The Rabbit. He'd be Rabbit 2. Don't, oh, don't say that. It's TV. It's television. Right? <laughs> it's still television. Yeah, rabbits are cute. They multiply too. That's an interesting retort. <laughs> uh, you are a student of boxing. You study all these films. You got this stuff that you bore your friends with and make them watch and everything. <laughs> Out of all your stuff you look at um, with Muhammad Ali fighting, what's your favorite? Muhammad Ali and Cleveland Williams. Really? That was a beautiful fight, man. That was artistic. That's Ali at his best. Excuse me? I, well, I wasn't even born in 66, wasn't it? Was it 66? The 66 in Houston Superdome. Yeah. yeah. I, was, yeah. I was 10. I wasn't born yet, I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I think a long time ago, I was, it was in Bronx, and I was in a detention home for bad kids, right? Mm -hmm. And Muhammad came and he visited us. And this was at the time the movie The Greatest was out. So all the kids sat down, and we watched the movie The Greatest. And then Ali came in. And this is a funny story. Once I saw him, and I saw his impact, and what kind of aura he came once he entered the room. Mm -hmm. By no means, from watching him fight, I knew I could never copy or emulate his style because he was so far advanced as far as technology and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the future as far as boxing was concerned. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to be like him. And I meant as far as being famous, um, having money, and just be me the way yeah. I am now. You know what yeah. I mean? I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be just like this guy right. as far as success is yeah. concerned. I tell him this all the time. I must have been 10 years old then. And he said, God, get out of here. No one wants to hear it or anything. But yeah. if, if I never met him that time, I would never have been the person I am now. But did you actually get to talk to him? Oh, yeah, I talked to him all the time. He never wants to hear it. He said, get out of here, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, back then, at the detention oh, I could never get close to him because I was like the bad guy, or the yeah, troublemaker. Brown pants yeah. and yellow shirt. So you had a brown pants, yellow shirt? Everybody <laughs> <laughs> had a brown pants, yellow shirt. You remember? He, oh, everybody had that. Oh, okay. <laughs> That was the uniform. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> now, what was it about that Cleveland Williams fight that you liked? Because you watched him, you know what I mean? That was him at marvelous physical shape. When you watch him in the later years, you know what I mean? He's, his personality reflecting, you know what I mean? His characteristics, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And his character overwhelming everyone, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because deep down belief. And totally manipulating the, the, the human mind at that time when fighters had particular times before it was just authentically tough. You hit me, hit me, mm -hmm. and who's going to land the first blow? Who's going to take it? Yeah. It's like I was saying, this authentic tough man. He's coming in, and he was just so marvelous, and he just, I would thank them, and he would make them believe they were tired. He would talk to them. A scientific and approach. It, it was just totally it's unbelievable. That's what I told him to say. <laughs> and I know at this time, it's very hard to believe, because sometimes, you know, I guess, I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm shocked right, to be here with the sugar man and the greatest, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He mentioned uh, he mentioned talking to your opponents. Did you talk to a lot of your opponents? Now, you told me this wasn't true, but Frazier claims in this videotape that they've rent that you told him he that, that you were God or something like that. That's not true though, right? What would you say to a Joe Frazier when you were in the ring? You're in trouble, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking bad about you. Uh-huh. This is anybody. Yeah, but you would talk to your opponents. I got that from a rascal named Gorgeous George. Gorgeous George, yeah. Yeah, Gorgeous George talked a lot of stuff. Never won, though. He didn't win as many Bob as Ali did, though. Yeah. In fact, I let him talk trash by watching all this. Really? You talk to your opponents, Ray? Yeah, in a very subconscious manner. 
Now, now, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I just reverse psychology. Mm -hmm. And uh, it didn't work with Tommy Hearns. <laughs> I can't imagine Ray talking trash. By any means, would you care for a few more of these uppercuts? <laughs> <laughs> Do you talk to people, Mike? Do you talk to people? Mike doesn't have to talk to nobody. <laughs> You've never talked to an opponent in the yeah. ring? You have? Yeah, Tyrell oh. Big. Really? What did you say to Tyrell? Um, in one incident, he said, um, wow, you're throwing elbows too? I said, you're going to die. Your elbows, you're going to die. <laughs> you know what? It, it's probably our pleasure um, to have this moment just to tell you how bad you are, man, and just sit down and kick it with you. You are truly the greatest of all times. Muhammad Ali.